Hi there, folks. So today's class is a grade 12 closed reading discussion lesson with a focus on in-task standards 1, 2, and 3. We're going to be looking at a text called What the Bagel Man Saw. The lesson we're going to watch today is the final part of a three-part lesson series in which grade 12 English students will engage in a text discussion. So before we get to the class discussion, let's take a look at the preparation that took place beforehand and some helpful context. It starts with working with a colleague to create a class that looks to foster individual and collaborative learning, positive social interaction, active engagement in learning, and self-motivation. And here's what we came up with. Students will do the following over three class periods. In class one, they'll read an article. In class two, they'll analyze the article. And in class three, they'll participate in an open class discussion on the article. That's what we'll be watching today. And why did we decide on this? Because of all these reasons here, take a look. These skills are not only important for academic success, but also for college and career readiness. Here's the text we're looking at. It's written by these two gentlemen, Stephen D. Levitt and Stephen J. Dubner, the free economics guys. Accompanying the text is a set of 12 questions. Here are those questions. Students will get into teams of two and look through those 12 questions. The students are free to choose their own partners. And once the teams are sorted, they'll be added to a list and the spinning wheel of destiny will do her magic. The spinning wheel of destiny will determine which team has first dibs on two questions they'd like to focus on from the set of 12. And so the process will continue until each team has two questions to focus on. Because of the large number of students, it was decided that we would split into two groups. And here are the results of that process. Though on the day, several students didn't turn up to school, so we ended up putting everyone in one discussion group. The discussion facilitator is a student chosen by the teacher. The discussion facilitator is tasked with leading and guiding discussion to ensure that it is productive, inclusive, and engaging for all participants. The teacher will serve as the timekeeper. The timekeeper is tasked with monitoring and managing the time allocated for discussion to ensure that it stays on track and within the specified time frame. In class two, we noticed some students were simply copying and pasting their answers from OpenAI or Google. So after a little in-class talk on responsible tech use, students were sent a reminder via text message. Beloved students, just a wee little reminder. I'm so very happy that you guys are using ChatGPT to help you with your analysis of the text. ChatGPT is a super useful tool that can provide you with plenty of information and insights, but it is not a substitute for your own understanding and expression. You need to be able to explain the text in your own words and relate it to the topic of our table discussion. You also need to consider who your audience is and what they expect from you, which in this case is your fellow classmates, so be sure to be using language that they can understand. Don't just repeat what ChatGPT says or read from a script. That will make your discussion boring and unengaging. Don't be boring and unengaging. Be interesting and engaging. How? Come in prepared with some notes and questions that you can use to spark a lively and meaningful conversation. If we all do that, we'll have a most lovely discussion. Here's the rubric the students were given prior to their class discussion. Here's what the text, what the bagel man saw, is about. As contextual information, our students were presented with a six minute ABC News feature that centers on the value of honesty and features an interview with Stephen Levitt. This is it here, sped up. And just a couple of things to note with regards to the discussion. Everyone participated to at least a question, but not everyone made the final cut of this 20 minute video. The full video of the class discussion will be shared on ManageBack. This will provide families of students with access to the video, allowing them to remain informed about their children's progress and ask any relevant questions they may have. In the upcoming week, we intend to review segments of the complete video with our students to analyze strengths and areas for improvement. And here's the class discussion. All right, people. We are recording. So remember, Emily and Rose are going to be running the discussion, just kind of follow their lead. Let's look to bring people into the conversation, right, to expand upon people's ideas, right? Let's not just read from the script, right, but kind of give our own. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep time. So if we go over to three minutes, I'll let you guys know. And then we can look to finish off that point and move on to the next. All right? So, Emily and Rose, do you want to? Can we have like last 10 seconds? 
Sure. So I'll, I'll do this when there's 10 seconds left, okay? Okay. All right. So when there's 10 seconds left, I'll go like this, okay? Okay. All right. So you guys can introduce it and we can get started. <coughs> All yours. So, how did you see guys like <laughs> join this discussion because many people they can come. So we're happy to see you guys like sitting here and to share our feelings about this task, about um, this strange person who sells bagel after he graduated from very, very good university. Now, uh, so, um, let's see the first paragraph of this text. We can see he is trying to use the... Um, <coughs> um, he is constantly using the word he and his. This kind of words are trying to like give us a feeling of telling other story. So, also, there's a word, once upon a time. When can we see this word? I would say like in some fairy tales, like the Snow White and uh, Sleeping Beauty, this kind of fairy tales. What do you think why the author is using once upon a time and the verb he or his in this text from the beginning? Um, so, uh, do you guys think there is any difference between this first paragraph and uh, the first paragraph you wrote in your essay? Or you guys think it's the same with the book, the introduction, these elements? Anyone else? I think by um, giving his experience to his readers or audiences, um, this kind of experience will catch the, like, um, the audience will be very curious about what will happen after. Like with this kind of experience, why he chose to sell bagel or like how sell bagel changed his life. Because he basically made, uh, I mean, how to say that? Made a point that is trying to catch everyone's eyes and let them into the next steps. And I think, yeah, we can also add as well, uh, we can ask the question again from Envy. Do we think it's an effective hook? I mean, what are your thoughts, uh, Ruby? Does it make you want to read the, the story more? Do you think it's an engaging hook in terms of taking this uh, fairy tale kind of uh, approach and then kind of diving into their story, right? Because they discuss how he's unhappy at work, right? Look at that change. Yeah, I didn't think they were going to be enough. What? It does make you want to be, okay. What's that, Kelly? When I saw the once upon a time, it gives me a feeling that, like, it is something that I write when I just learned how, uh, maybe when I was in the kid. So, because when, at that time, I usually tell stories and start with the beginning of the once upon a time. And uh, when this author writes this, um, as a beginning, I feel like uh, it's not going to be that uh, academic, mm -hmm. or uh, I feel like it is a really easy story for me. So it gives me a really like good impression to uh, want to read this article. Mm -hmm. And I think, actually, you raise a point there that's connected to one of the other questions, right, in terms of the writing style, which we'll come to later. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll give it back to you, you, Rose, and uh, Emily. So, um, the next question is about humorous. So, uh, can anyone find some examples of humor in this text? So, let's tell me, how many did you find, and where is it? I think it 
It's ridiculous, I think, the analysis, because you can use the weather and have a ray, but maybe the humor can lighten the tone of the article and make it more engaging for readers. Like it used playful language and poking fun. Yeah. And and uh, anyone find uh, other examples? I feel like it's not so uh, highlighted because when I read the um, text, I cannot actually find those humor examples at first time. So can anyone find the second one? Or like, is this uh, some example similar to humor? <coughs> and I find in line 148, you can find it and it's that. Um, one customer left a note on the side of the wall apps, why it's fancy, please park in parking place. You're freaking a lot of people out. Like, uh, it's also, maybe it's a little cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think all the humor in this, uh, in, in this uh, article are all <laughs> cold. <laughs> cold. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, we are so hard to find some example like this. So we can only find this maybe not too fun, but yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Well, okay, it's well, okay. Well, humor, <laughs> yeah. humor as well. Yeah, <laughs> no discrimination. I feel like maybe because it's an essay, so he won't use the humor that make you ha 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 like that. He might use something that make you feel like, uh -huh. yeah, it's fun. Just uh, this kind of humor. Yeah. So let's move what, on. What what about uh, uh, the description, of Paul F. Yeah. How is he described? Is there any, is there any humor in that? <laughs> no? Foreigners, foreigners. Like, we always humor by our local humor, but not like, international humor. There's some, we need some time. <laughs> okay. Alright, we'll come back to the humor one later. Um, yeah, we can go to the next question. So, yes, now we have Paul F's characterization of what honest and uh, cheaters are, right? We also have, yeah, a little bit of an example of humor there as well, right? In terms of <laughs> describing that personal experience, right? I think it's, it's a humorous situation, right? And uh, how do Dubner and Levitt also characterize honest people and, ch and cheaters based on the article? We don't have the person responsible for this touch of action. Oh. Yeah, but we all read the article, right? We all read it. I mean, what, what, what's the impression? And we can also, we can also, sorry, go ahead, whatever. <laughs> Actually, I asked this question to ChatGPT first, and uh, he answered me that Dutler and David used the term honest people to refer to individuals who adhere to a moral code and follow the rules in the situation where cheating may benefit them. And on the other hand, they use the term cheater to refer to individuals who break the rules and act dishonestly. But even if doing some harms others or society as a whole, while this declined to me uh, may be a useful simplification for the purpose of their analysis, it is important to recognize that in reality, uh, human behavior is often more complex. People's actions can be influenced by a variety of factors, including social norms, incentives, and situational context. Additionally, uh, individuals may engage in dishonest behavior in some situations and not in others, depending on a range of factors such as personal values. Uh, perceived risk, risks and rewards, and the presence of monetary or enforcement uh, machine list. So, actually, uh, I use uh, have a simple example. Uh, I use ChatGPT here, and you know, ChatGPT are many people use this machine to assist their maybe work. And some people maybe use these tools to have a really high score. And uh, some honest people, they do, do the work by themselves. And maybe they cannot achieve uh, this high uh, grade. Like, 
uh, people maybe use the AI to gene. So that's, all right, let, let's linger on this a little bit actually. So Aaron raises an interesting point in terms of how we can relate what we define as honest and cheaters in our own lives. So Aaron's raised the point of using ChatGPT. As she said, perhaps, I don't know if you were implying that people who use ChatGPT are cheaters and those who do not are honest. Is that what you're suggesting here, Aaron? Yeah, maybe sometimes they use the uh, AI to uh, like the asses. Yeah, all right, so if we were, so based kind of on the article, right, it's kind of like a little bit binary in terms of how we're describing people as cheaters <coughs> or honest, right, whether or not they pay for a bagel or not. How else can we relate it to our own lives here? Yeah. I just saw a case yesterday. It's, a, um, it's not real, but it was happened in a... You know, like this study people there, in the college study. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the lawyers, people come from here. And um, it talks about the people who cheat for his like graduation certificate yeah. of his college, and and the police just catch him, <laughs> go on the stage, and that you. Uh, because another company is like trying to make him bad from his wife and companies and things like that. And he said he is not regret to cheat because this helps him achieve like good life. He has a very good job and a very good wife, a very good family because of the cheat. So there's a word in Chinese, there's a sentence in Chinese called um, if you if you do something once, you will do it forever and every time. I think this sentence actually fits in some scenarios because when you can achieve success very easily, you want you want like you don't want to do hard hard things hard things ever because cheat is all always like easier than be honest. So I think. This is why. Um, and so, is that man a cheater, or is he a good, honest man because he's providing for his family in a good way? He is a cheater. He is a cheater. Binary. Did you say you agree? Uh, no, I mean it's like yeah, two-sided. Yeah, yeah, you cannot yeah. like complex, definitely say he is one hundred percent honest or a cheater. There's a risk yeah. to be cheating. It's a little bit tough. I, I think maybe similar with the ChatGPT example, right? Because we may have different ways of looking at it, right? So, um, yeah, maybe this binary approach doesn't always work. Um, but anyway, I guess we can move on to the next one. So we are going approaching to the last page, last page of this conversation. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as we move toward the conclusion, um, explain the appeal the writers use here and what is effect on the reader. How do you feel when you're reading um, the way he is leading you to a conclusion? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, this is an interesting point. Let's uh, kind of talk a little bit about this. So yes, it's obviously a long article, right? Um, but was it interesting or was it absolutely horrible to read? It's horrible to read. Why? Too long. Yeah, too, too long. long. <laughs> Think with words. <laughs> <laughs> the sentence messed up and uh, formed a circle, something in my mind, and I cannot read it. <laughs> so, it would you have preferred it to be less story-like and just kind of dry with all the information, like this is what happened basically, you know, just cold, hard data. I think, like, less storytelling. Articles should be shorter. And no matter if it's a story or essay, I can't read it. If it's short. I would say it's personal ability thing. Because maybe foreigners reading this article, they would think, ah, just a, uh, just a small dish. Well, <laughs> one second, finish. <laughs> For us, it's like... No, it's, it's definitely a long article, but... Um... But wait, you didn't find uh, Paul Paul F's journey interesting in terms of how he, he gave up his job, right, to, to kind of f pr pursue his own dream, right, and then he recorded all the data basically for his new bagel business, right, and yeah. from that we can draw some conclusions. 
Yeah, I agree, but his journey is too long. <laughs> <laughs> alright, his journey is too long. Um, alright. <laughs> well, what if we had a bagel stand here? Or I think we kind of a talked about this stand. during the week, right? Not, so, a bagel. <laughs> so, if we had like a little bread. Well, instead of bagels, maybe bouncer. Yeah? Am I pronouncing that right? We all love bouncers, right? Oh, all of them. Oh. Oh, all right. my, my pronunciation was terrible. <laughs> you shouldn't make fun of people, especially as the discussion facilitator. You know, this is terrible form. <laughs> so if we had that, look now you've hurt my confidence. I'm going to use the English description that Chinese bun. <laughs> That everybody loves, right? It is especially delicious in the morning, right? And we just put it there, and like we had the QR code, you could scan it. But you obviously had the option not to, right? Nobody's watching. Do you? I would take it because I do not love it. So you would choice. take it, and you don't even like it. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> it's it's a pizza. Bad, I would definitely take it, but except, yeah, that's the end. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> we never got to question twelve. <laughs> All right.